If you look around, it's easy to tell that we are in an extreme drought here in Oklahoma. Every single one of our lakes have below normal water levels. This lack of rain is something some residents haven't seen in a very long time. In my pond, has stayed lower the last five years than it has over 30. This year was the first year in the 30 years I've been there that I was worried about having enough water for cattle. We all need water to survive, and recently here in the plains, the rainfall just hasn't been enough to fully satisfy our demands. In Oklahoma, we all know the weather can change in an instant, but for the last five years, Oklahoma City has seen below normal annual precipitation. And in southwest Oklahoma, this lack of precip has caused them to experience D4, the highest rating given on the U.S. Drought Monitor. Here at Lake Hefner in Oklahoma City, the water level is so low, it's hard just to get a boat on the lake. In fact, where I'm standing right now, the water level should be well above my head in normal conditions. Why is this drought happening? Well, we talked to climatologist Gary McManus to tell us why. Well, really what we've seen is the, the, uh, over the last two years is just that uh, a jet stream that controls our weather. It sort of steers where the weather goes. It's been shed far, the, far to the north uh, quite a bit. So normally we would see storm systems come through, you know, once every couple of weeks and we would get some good rainfalls in the springtime and the rest of the year as well. But those have been, have been largely absent. And when we do get storm systems, they come through so fast we don't get the, the moisture we need from the Gulf of Mexico to fuel those, those rainfall events. So, you know, it's just sort of been a, a continuous, persistent pattern. We know the drought is serious currently, but what can we forecast for the future? Could there be any relief in sight? Well, we talked to KWTV meteorologist Gary England, someone who has been forecasting weather in Oklahoma for over 40 years. I think the Oklahoma drought of now and in recent years has been very significant, very close to the worst in many areas as far as precipitation amounts. And uh, who, who knows when it's going to end for sure. But if you look at the, the lack of rainfall and the extended periods, but there's always you know, a drought in Oklahoma somewhere sometime. But this one has been very large. It's gradually spread like the 30s drought did to the northern plains and places on to the east. So I think it's, it's a tough go. Uh, I think that, uh, it, you know, I've been around a long time. I wasn't, I, I don't remember the 30s, but, you know, the 30s, when you look at that, what happened there, there was, it was extremely dry, the winds were strong, and the farming practices were terrible. And so all those problems. The time it got to the 50s drought, which was horrendous, and I remember that one, is that they had built uh, tree lines to stop the erosion, they started terrace farming, and that helped a lot. And now that we have all these good farming practices and all these things, we just don't have the water. And uh, I maintain it probably comes in cycles. I mean, we have droughts, and then we have very wet periods. Then we have droughts, and we have very wet periods. Is there something behind these cycles? Could climate change really play a role in the current drought situation? Well, the climate change that we are seeing across the globe, it's, it's hard to say whether that's playing a huge impact in this or just a small impact or, you know, just a nominal effect. It, it's something that the researchers will have to continue to look at. Now, we've seen these types of patterns in our past, so we know that they exist anyway, whether the, the climate change or the warming of the globe that we're seeing, whether that's having an impact on those natural variations. Uh, again, that's something that the researchers will have to find out. It's fascinating. You know, it's what I like about weather is that nobody really knows for sure whether it's a forecast or what. There are a lot of theories, but when you ask the people, okay, prove it to me. Prove to me that X causes Y and that's when the problems come up. So it's a fun, fun business to be in. No matter what happens in the future, the thirst for water will never cease, but the supply may be dwindling down at a harsh rate. And for the last several years, people have said, I need rain, 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 then I get an email say, look, I'm selling off half my herd. They're, they don't have the water for the cattle. And it's a real problem, and it's going, I think it's gonna to continue to exist off and on. I think it's a very serious threat. We may not know when that big rain will come to relieve the drought, but by being proactive and conserving, we can help ensure the abundance of that most valued liquid.